foundation Our rock, the only solid ground The nations arise and fall Come on, put those hands together Once strong, now it's shaken But we trust forever in your name In the name of Jesus Jesus is on the throne. He's victorious. He's already won. That means you've already won. Oh, I need somebody to wake up tonight. Oh, we're singing about our God. We're singing about our King. Come on, are you with us tonight?
Some of you may be standing there saying, man, we sure are saying that, that a lot. Well, you know what? Sometimes you got to say, you got to hear things a few times to let it sink in. All right? my, my wife would be the first to say, yes, that's absolutely right when it comes to me. All right. Sometimes you got to say a few things to let it really sink in. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? And the, the, the amazing thing about that. It's the more that you say that, the less it becomes a question and the more it's a declaration of what God is doing and that nothing can stop the Lord God Almighty. I think that deserves a praise in this place tonight. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah, Father, that there is nothing, nothing that can stop you. Nothing, Father. God, you are the great I am. Nothing is impossible for you. And we are here standing rejoicing in that fact. And we thank you, Father. God, we praise you and we glorify you. We thank you, Father, for all that you are doing in and through us. God, we stand and we praise and we rejoice with all of the people whose lives were changed forever this past week in Freedom Crusade. And we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, that you are not done. God, that we are not done, that we are going to continue to expect more, expect more of you, God, expect more of your spirit being poured out in our services, in our lives. And we thank you, Father, for moving. God, you're moving in our nation. God, you're moving in our leadership. You're working in our president, Father. You're working in all those in authority. And we thank you, Father, right now, God, that nothing can stop you, nothing can keep you, nothing can hold you back from moving and working in our lives and we thank you for it father in jesus mighty name we pray and everyone agrees says amen hallelujah hey turn around greet somebody around you welcome them tonight before you're seated praise god hallelujah then you can be seated we're so excited that you're here with us that you're a part of our service tonight I had a really good week this past week. I don't know about you guys, but wasn't Freedom Crusade just incredible? Oh my goodness. It was so good. It was so great. 
And let me just say, I know Pastor mentioned this Sunday, but again, we want to thank every single volunteer, every single person that gave their time. I'm telling you, it would not be done. It would not be, we could not pull this off without a team, a unified effort. And so we are so thankful for each and every one of you. We have been receiving more and more testimonies by the day. And I want to continue. I want to tell you, please, if God did something in your life during Freedom Crusade, we want to hear about it. We want to know about it. So email us, hit us up on Facebook, any of the social media you know, platforms that we're on, call the office, write it down, take one of those cards. I'm, I don't care what card you use, pick a card, write it down, turn it in the offering. I'm telling you, we want to hear what God has done for you. All right, because how do we overcome? By the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. I'm telling you what God has done in your life is a testimony and can, can do something for someone else. So I want to encourage each and every one of, you to, one of you to do that. And I'm telling you, Freedom Crusade was so good. And if you're a guest tonight and you're probably asking, what was Freedom Crusade? Well, keep coming. And this time next year, you will experience all of what Freedom Crusade is all about. And so if you are a guest, I just want to welcome you tonight. I'm telling you, you are in the best seat in town because you're here worshiping with us. We're so honored that you're here. My name is Paul. I'm one of the pastors here on staff. And there's a card in the seat back in front of you that says, I'm new here. We'd love it if you take that card, fill it out with as much information as you're comfortable with. Then you can take that card and do one of two things with it. You can place that card in the offering container at the very end of service when our ushers are passing the containers. Or you can hold on to that card until we're dismissed. Come out to our guest center, which is directly back behind these back doors to the right. You cannot miss it. We would love to meet you face to face. Thank you so much for being a part of our service and place a free gift in your hand just, just as a way of saying thank you for, for coming and worshiping with us tonight. And I, again, I just want to remind you because it's it's worth reminding, all right? Again, this is something else. It, it takes a couple of times for it to sink in. If God did something in your life, let us know. Please, please, please let us know. And I know it was a great week. I know it took a lot out of us, but I'm telling you, we are not going to be slowing down. We are not going to be sitting back and say, wow, look what the Lord has done, which is great. But I'm telling you, we're going to be continuing to pray over every single person who was, who was touched, whose lives were changed. And we are going to believe for more, more. We're believing God for more. He's going to do more as long as we're expecting it and believing it. I'm telling you, he is going to respond. And so I want to encourage each and every one of you to continue to pray up, get, get your expectation glasses on, and let's kick this thing into high gear because I'm telling you, God is doing some incredible, incredible things. Amen? And since I have the mic, I'm going to continue to stand up here, and I just want to share a brief little tidbit about something that's very dear to my heart, and that is tithes and offering. Come on, let's pray. Let's, let's, come on. I need some response. I need, I need, there we go. I need some feedback. And you know, I was thinking about this today. I am so thankful that I understand for myself that when it comes to tithes and offering and giving, that I don't have to rely on a formula or some sort of process to figure out why it's important. And I'm going to tell you the reasons why I don't have to figure that out is because I trusted God with my finances and I believed what the word says, what happens when I give and when I get involved in God's business. Because once you get involved in God's business, he starts getting involved in your business. But my point is, is that if you continue to think that that giving and that and that putting money into the church is some sort of natural process to be figured out, you are going to be missing out on so much that God has for you. And I'm telling you, the world is trying to do that. If you don't believe me, after service tonight, just Google tithe and watch all the different posts, blogs, and stuff. And the majority of the things that you will see is about whether or not the tithe is for today or not. And I'm telling you, it, it, it really hurts me and, and, and saddens my heart when I see those posts because when I see people write that, that just clearly tells me that they do not have the revelation of what giving into the church, giving into the kingdom will actually do for you and not just for yourself, but for other people. See, it's not a process to be figured out. It's an opportunity to use your faith and see God work in your life. 
we should be, and I say this all the time when I'm up here, we should be the most generous people on this planet because eternity is at stake. For as long as we're here, eternity in people's lives is at stake. And so if there's ever a time that I'm going to, that, that, that there's a time to sow, there's a time to give so that people's lives can be changed, there's an opportunity for people's lives to be changed, man, I'm going to take it. I'm going to do it. And I'm telling you, if you're just sitting back thinking, well, I don't know if that's for today, it doesn't matter. You are missing out on so much that God has for you. All you've got to do is trust God. Proverbs 3, verse 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, on your brain, but in all of your ways acknowledge him and he will instruct, he will delight your path. Finances is, is all as a part of all your ways. I'm telling you, stop trying to figure it out. Take a step of faith, trust God, and see God move and work in your life. Amen? Amen. Hey, there's, there's a couple ways that you can give here at Word of Life. You can give online at wordoflifecenter.org. Just click on the Give tab, or you can uh, give with an offering envelope. You can fill out your information and all that as well. We're going to receive the offering at the, at the end of service, but you can go ahead and prepare that uh, at this time. And I'm going to go ahead and pray over all of those who are giving. So, Father, God, we thank you. God, I thank you for every single person, Father, who's, who's trusting you, who's taking a step of faith and believing you for whatever it is, God, that they're believing you for. But I thank you, Father, that they're sowing into the kingdom of God. Father, they're sowing into the things of the Spirit so that there's opportunities created so that people have an opportunity to know you. We thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hey, at this time, I'd like to have the prayer partners go ahead and stand and, and get into the aisles. The reason we do this, and we do this all the time, is because we want to give every single person an opportunity that if you have a need in your life, maybe you need healing in your body, maybe, maybe something's going on with your family, if you need somebody to agree with you in prayer, we want to encourage you, let one of these men and women pray with you over that need because we believe that God is going to respond and meet that need for you or maybe for someone else. If you know of someone else that has a need, go ahead and, and stand and let one of these men and women pray with you over that. And again, we believe God is going to work and move in their lives. Amen. So why don't we stand tonight and let's just step over into worship and let's just continue to thank God for all the incredible, incredible things that he's done in Freedom Crusade and continuing to do. Hallelujah. Just want to encourage you, God didn't get tired during Freedom Crusade. He didn't run out. He didn't run out. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like being in a pool. You can spend all day at the pool, never get in. So just because you went to the pool a lot, you may, you may have a tan, but you might not have ever gotten wet. I want to encourage you. Maybe you came to every single service, but maybe you stayed in the shallows. Go deep. Go deep. There's a place in the presence of God with your name on it tonight. And it's up, totally up to you whether you go there or not. So I just want to encourage you. Forget about the day. Forget about what you have after this, what you've had before this. Let this time just be a moment with you and the Lord. Just, just between you and Him. Be refreshed. Times of refreshing can be found in His presence. It's one of my favorite scriptures. So just purpose in your heart right now. Go deep. There's a calm that covers me.
to go back into that in just a moment. As I was standing back in the back there, just listening and worshiping, I, I love all of that song, but I really love that part where we're singing, God, I know you're, you're never going to let, you're never going to let me down. It just can't happen. I said, it just can't happen. It just can't. I was thinking about Jairus. You're probably familiar with that story, right? That event, that moment that happened in the Bible. Jairus came to Jesus and said, Jesus, if you're coming and, and lay hands on my daughter, come to my house, she's going to live. I mean, it's going to be all good. On the way there, you remember what happened? People from the house came and said, hey, Jairus, don't, 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 don't bother Jesus any longer. It's over. It's done. We're sorry to tell you this, Jairus, but your daughter didn't make it. Aren't you thankful Jesus didn't turn and go, Jairus, I'm, I'm, I guess we'll do a funeral. Aren't you thankful that Jesus didn't turn to that? Aren't you, and say that, aren't you thankful that Jesus turned and, and, and he said basically, look, hey Jairus, don't you worry, I got this. I'm not going to let you down. Now listen, listen, the same Jesus that came through for Jairus is the same Jesus that you serve. The same God that didn't let Jairus down is the same God that you serve. Can somebody say amen to that? So let's go back into that for a bit, Chris. And listen, you just begin to say that to God. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what you're going through. You just begin to tell God. You say, God, I know you will never, ever, ever let me down. We well, just a few more minutes to stay here just and declare that. I'm never going to let, never going to let me down. circumstances look like. It doesn't matter what the doctor says. It doesn't matter what your bank account says. God always comes through. Amen. He always comes through. Amen. Praise God. Look, why don't you turn about two or three people, give them a high five and say, I know you love Jesus because you're here on Wednesday night. High five. I know you love Jesus because you are here on a Wednesday night. Praise God. It is so good to be here tonight. And uh, first of all, I want to welcome everybody who's watching on live stream. So thankful that through technology, you're able to be in the service with us. So, hey, Word of Life family, let's give everybody that's watching a great big warm welcome to this place. You may be watching us overseas. You may be local. If you're local, uh, we'd love for you to drop by and say hello. Or if you're 
ever here and you're overseas and you ever come through Shreveport, you got to come by and see us. We'll promise you we will love you and treat you just like, just like family. Hey, um, uh, you probably know by now that we uh, do some series during the year. We, we, we take our year and we plan out some series. We've done Holy Who, Holy Who, we've done that series. How many, how many, how many was, was, was uh, touched by, by that series? You know, it's just awesome. We still, still just getting great reports of people, their lives being changed and, and uh, just uh, getting to know the Holy Spirit, being introduced to Him, some just a refresher course and just uh, reigniting that relationship relationship that that we have um, we have available to us uh, we did a relate series that was earlier in the year talking about relationships and relating to God and how that that that, 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 that our relationship here affects the relationships here right and, and so, so we, 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 we are doing these series, one, because we feel like that's uh, what God needs to say, wants to say to us as a church. But also, we let you know ahead of time, we let you know ahead of time so that you can invite people and bring them here. Because a lot of times, they're asking some of the same questions that we're answering on those weekends. All right. You know, folks are asking questions. They're asking questions about God. And so you can just say, hey, hey, we got this series. We're talking about this on this coming weekend or this particular month. I'd love for you to come. We're going to be answering some questions that you, you might be asking. Well, we've got one coming up here beginning the first Sunday in August, the first Sunday in August. And the title, the title of it is How to Have a Bad Day. <laughs> How to Have a Bad Day. And I'm glad I got that response because... <laughs> If it would have been crickets in here quiet, I would have been, well, maybe we need to change the name of that series. But, but, but here, here's what we're saying about that. Here's what we're saying about that series. Now, everybody has a bad day. Everybody's going to have a bad day. The question is, how will you handle yours when you have it? How are you going to handle yours when you have it? Are you going to fight? Or are you going to fold? Are you going to fight? Are you going to fold? How many knows it's the will of God to fight? Come on now. I said, come on now and to have an experience victory in our lives. And, and so uh, we'll be starting that the first Sunday in August. But this coming Sunday, uh, on the way out, you're going to be receiving some cards, some cards. And we put those in your hands as a reminder to invite people. But also, you can take those cards and put them in friends' hands and, uh, and, and have them here. Because I promise you, you have people in your, uh, in your circle. You come across people all the time, uh, you, maybe you work with, friends, family, that... Uh, are, are, are having a bad day. They're, they're struggling and you can be the answer. Let me also say this about how you guys have responded and how well you guys are doing. Uh, I, we are experiencing, we're experiencing great growth. Yeah. Amen. Our attendance, our attendance uh, is uh, right about, it's about 15% higher this, the first six months of 2019 than it was in 2018. Amen. Our attendance. That is incredible. Amen. And so the reason that that's happening is because you guys, you guys are hearing what God is saying. You're hearing what God is saying and you're responding and people are coming. People's lives are being touched. People's lives are being changed. We've had a thousand, where's uh, Ashley? A thousand, thirty-five? She don't, she's going to make sure she gets that extra one. We've had 1,036 steps taken since the beginning of the year. What, that means 1,036 steps. That means people, 1,036 steps. What we mean by that is that, that people have taken steps, getting baptized, coming to Discover. Every, every month, we got people coming and Discover, wanting to connect, and it's because of you. It's because of you. You are responding to what God is saying, and so let's not back off. It's like Pastor Paul said earlier, we're not going to settle. Come on now. We're not settling. We are expanding. We're pushing forward because eternity as it set, is at stake. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, well, listen, I want to I share uh, a message with you tonight, and the title of it is called Making the Shift. Making the Shift. 
Um, several a few years ago, uh, we were, Sandy and I were pastoring down in Lake Charles. We had had a friend of mine that was going to come and and speak at a, a men's breakfast that we were having. We we're having a men's breakfast and and uh, really excited about it. And and so men were excited, and we had some other churches that were going to be a part. So we knew that there were going to be a lot of people, a lot of men there. So uh, we just pumped about it. And so on, it was on Saturday morning, scheduled to be on Saturday morning. Well, Friday night about ten thirty, my friend calls me. He's from out of town. <laughs> he said. Can you please forgive me? Can you please forgive me? Because I, I'm just, there's, I'm, I'm, there's something that's serious that's, that's come up and, and, and I can't be there for in the morning. I apologize, but I'm just going to have to not be there in the morning. And I'm thinking, oh no, you know, what, what are we going to do? And then I thought, well, I'm it. You know, I'll, I'll preach. I'll, I'll, I'll share. And so my, my next thought was, what am I going to preach on? You know, typically I like to pray and think about it and all that. And then, then, I, then I thought, okay, all right, David and Goliath. When in doubt, go to 1 Samuel 17. That's what I learned in Bible school. When in doubt, because listen, if you're a preacher, you're a pastor, you're a minister, and you can't get something out of David and Goliath, you probably need to do something else, right? So, so I went there, and, and of course, you know, I've read David and Goliath. I've heard it since I was this tall, you know, the story. And, and then um, uh, it was just something that happened that night that I, I, just, I just saw some things I'd never seen there before. Saw some things that I never never seen there before. One one thing that I saw there is is how that the 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 trajectory of an entire nation was changed. The, the trajectory of an entire nation was changed. The outlook of an entire nation was changed after they had been stuck in the same place for forty days. And the reason that that happened, the reason that that trajectory, for that trajectory changed, the reason that there was uh, a progress that, that came in and there was, that nation began to move forward, the reason for that is there was a young shepherd boy by the name of David that spearheaded the change. He spearheaded it. He came in and he said, look, hey, look we're not going to settle for this any longer. Day 41, that's the day that he was there. Day 41 is going to be different than the former 40 days. We're moving. Goliath's going down. And some great things are going to happen for the, the people of Israel, God's people. And you know that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened because there were men that for 40 days had been running away from the Philistines, had been running away from Goliath, had been running away when, when, when David stepped in and, and, and spearheaded that, 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 uh, that, that, in that moment, spearheaded that change in trajectory. There, there were men that had been running they, away from the enemy. They began to run towards him. Come on now. So we can say it this way. There was a massive shift that took place and David spearheaded it. So David, man, he's one of my heroes. But then a, a few hundred years later, th there, was, there was another shift that took place. It's another shift that took place. And it happened, and it happened in one of David's, in David's lineage. I could say it that way. Isaiah talked about it in Isaiah 9-7. Isaiah 9-7, it was a prediction, a prophecy. And, and it says this, it's of the greatness of his government, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. Yeah. Talking about this person that came, he came on the scene, he came in the earth, he came on the scene, and, and he spearheaded a change. He, he, he made something shift, a, a huge thing shift. And again, Isaiah is prophesying about him here. He says, he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. So who was Isaiah talking about? Who was the one that came to the planet, came to the earth, came on the scene and made this big shift? It was Jesus. It was Jesus. <laughs> The amazing thing about Jesus is, is that the shift that he made, the shift that he made wasn't something that had been in place just for 40 days. It was something that had been in place for centuries, for generations. I like to say it this way. Jesus is the master of the shift. 
Jesus is the master of the transition. Jesus is the master at initiating and spearheading Spearheading change. See, because when Jesus came to the earth, when Jesus came to the earth, he did two things that were significant. Two things that are significant that, that, that affects us in a great way today. The first thing that he did that was extremely significant is he paid for our sin bill. Is there anybody in the house that's thankful that Jesus came to redeem us to pay for our sins and do something for us that we couldn't do for ourselves? Is there anybody here that says, thank you, Jesus. Man, my sins are forgiven. My sins are forgiven. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. Why? Because of Jesus. But there was something else that took place that was significant. He came, he came to redeem, but he also came to revamp, or he came to overhaul the way that God's purpose would be accomplished in the earth. He overhauled it. He revamped it. You say, well, what, what was that? What was it that Jesus did? What was it that Jesus came to shift? What was it that he came to overhaul? Again, it was the way that he would work in the earth. It was the way or the manner or the method that God would use to, to unfold his will in the earth. That's the reason in Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, Jesus is praying here. He's talking about prayer, how to pray. At the very beginning of the Lord's Prayer, at the very beginning, after honoring God and, and honoring who God is, um, um, Jesus said, you need to pray this way. Pray that your kingdom come, talking about God, that your what? Your kingdom. Everybody say kingdom. kingdom. That your what? Kingdom. That your what? Kingdom. That your what? Kingdom. That your kingdom come, watch this, and what you want to be done here on earth as it is in heaven. So here, listen to me, here is where, where Jesus put some very important things together. He put, he put together the fact that he came, to, he came to, to, re, to not just reorganize, to revamp some things, the way that God's plan and purpose would unfold in the earth. And he said it would be done through a kingdom. It would be done through a kingdom. And in Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, he put those two things together. He said, the kingdom and what? The will of God. The kingdom and the will of God in one thought. So when Jesus came to the earth, he came to revamp some things. And what he did, he came to, he came to revamp the old way, do away with the old way, and introduce a new way that he would work and planet earth from that point forward. Would you say, again, what is that? It is his what? His kingdom. Because he was shifting it from, he was shifting it from the, the temple law-centered approach to God's will coming to pass on the earth. He, he was shifting it from that to a kingdom method. What are we talking about tonight? We're talking about a shift. We're talking about the kingdom of God. Let, let, me, let me simplify and say it this way. He was shifting it from a, a place that you would go that you couldn't experience God because it was in a temple. You could go there year after year, year after year you could go there, but you never could experience God. He was shifting it from that to a kingdom approach where it wasn't impersonal anymore. It was, to be, it was to be very, very personal because in Luke chapter 17, look what Jesus says about his kingdom. He said, people will not say, look, here it is. There it is talking about his kingdom because he said, because God's kingdom is where it is within you. Amen. It's within you. You can say it this way. He went from, he was taking it from a temple that people visited to another kind of temple. Are you with me? To another kind of temple where he would move in them and they would be in him for eternity. It's a shift that was taking place. Anybody getting anything out of this already? I'm telling you, this is good. And so... So you read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You read them, and, and what you'll find is that Jesus talked all the time about his kingdom. I mean, all the time. 
It's one of the first things that he talked about. And one of the first things that he, the last things that he talked about before he left this earth, he's talking about his kingdom. Matter of fact, if you hung around Jesus any time at all, I promise you he's going to bring kingdom up. Yeah. He'd say, hey, Jesus, you know, there's a tropical depression down in the Gulf. He's, ah, I'll be all right. Let me talk to you about your kingdom, about my kingdom. <laughs> Jesus, I got some beautiful grandchildren here. They are awesome, aren't they? Yeah, that's great. But I want to talk to you about my kingdom. Yeah. Because, because, listen, he came to shift some things. So he talked about it all the time. And so open your Bibles to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Jesus is, is teaching. There's a just great, just huge crowd of people. So many people that he had to get in a boat. He had to, he had to, he had to get in a boat. I, th- I think Jesus was part redneck. Man, I, I, think, I think Jesus, we know he got like getting in boats. He did that quite a bit. And he loved to fish. You know, we, you know, so anyway. Um, so, so Jesus, Jesus is teaching, teaching this, at this lake and by this lake. And there were people everywhere. And so he teaches this parable. Everybody say parable. Now, now when Jesus would teach parables, some people, as you're reading the gospels, you'll see that he taught a lot in parables. As you read the gospels, you could go, well, that's just a cute story, or that was just a unique, a unique way of saying things and communicating. And, but the reality of a parable is, is that Jesus would take a spiritual truth. Everybody sp- say spiritual truth. Spiritual. Let me just say it this way. He would take a deep spiritual truth. How many deep sheep do we have in the ring? <laughs> Pastor, just take me deep. What that really means is say things I can't figure out. And you walk away going, man, that was deep. Can't figure it out. But he would take a spiritual truth, a life-changing truth, and he would connect a natural example to that so that the people that heard could understand it. How many believe it's the will of God for people to understand what the Word of God says? So he, he would simplify it. Matter of fact, one of our values here at Word of Life Center is simplicity. We don't want to make it complicated for people. We don't want to make it complicated for people to understand and move with God. We just want people to get it. Amen. And, and so Jesus would teach this parable. And so this, this, this teaching that he did, he talked about a farmer going out and they just sowing seed. He talked about it, and then, and then at the end of the message to the crowd, he, he stands up and he says, Hey! Anybody have ears to hear, let them hear. Anybody have ears to hear, let them, let, 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 let them hear. And then, and then the Bible says that afternoon that he moved from the crowd and he moved to what I called the crew. He moved from the crowd and he moved to the crew. Those were his disciples that he had just recently finished gathering. You know, the originals, the twelve. That's what I call the crew. And let me just say it this way. Jesus had his life group. Yeah. <laughs> right? J- Jesus believed in the crowd, but he also, he also believed what? In the life groups. And so he's hanging out with a group. And, and, and so they, they said, Jesus, would you tell us about this parable that you taught, this, the seed thing, the farmer thing? Tell us about that. And, and listen to what Jesus said. He, he said to the crew, the originals, he told them the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. That's what I said. <laughs> to the crew, he said, the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. So let me just ask you this. I wonder who had ears to hear. I, I wonder, I wonder who had ears to hear. Let me tell you, the ones that are hungry, that are hungry, they say, listen, I'm not satisfied with just Sunday morning. I got, I got to listen to me some truth on Monday and Tuesday. And when church comes on Wednesday, I'm going to be there again. Because you know what? I've got ears to hear. <laughs> and, and so they, they asked him and Jesus said the secret of the kingdom or we could say it this way the secret, to, the secret to how I'm going to move in the earth is yours it's yours you know why that's important listen you know why that's important 
It's because, because these 12, let me just ask you this question. Give me the name of anybody that was in the crowd. Can you give me any names? Give me the names of those who were in the crew. They went and changed the world. Why? Because they got the secret. They got the secret. They got the secret of how God works. Are you with me? And then Jesus goes on and he says, then Jesus said to them, watch this, get this. Jesus said to them, if you can't understand the meaning of this parable, how will you understand all the parables? Let, let me just say it this way. Jesus said to them, if you can't understand the meaning of this spiritual truth, how will you understand all the other truths? Little, little, little nugget here for you. This is the only parable that Jesus ever explained. And another little, if you like Greek, if you like to study, you like to dig down. The two words, could you put the scripture back up, verse 13 for me? When you look at that scripture, the two words there, understand, look to be the same in English, right? But in the Greek, they're not. Actually, in the Greek, they're two different words. The first word is oida. Sounds pretty, I, I, I just got a good Greek dictionary, <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's oida. And, and what oida, the type of knowledge, understanding or knowledge that that's talking about, it, it, is an, it is just to know something intimately. In other words, we could say it this way, the way we'd say it here in South. You'd know it inside and out. How, how many's ever said that? Well, I know that inside and out. I, I, and that means I know it intimately. But, and then the, the next word is gnosko, which means to have a progressive knowledge. So let me just say it this way. Let me say it this way. Let me say it this way. Jesus is saying, if you don't understand this spiritual truth about the kingdom, you're not going to understand any other spiritual truth that I talk about. Now, again, who changed the world? It was the crew. They changed the world. And guess what? They got the secret. They understood what he said. And they went on to change the world. Let me say this. They went on to make the shift when a lot of other people didn't. It's a foundational truth. And Jesus said, I'm going to build on this. So, so somebody says this evening, well, Pastor John, what is this? I mean, you're really excited about this. I love the word. Anybody here love the word? Man, I just love it. It's so rich. But, but you, you may say this, you know, what does it have to do with me? How does this affect me? Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Getting this is the difference between living by fate and living by faith. And I'm not saying this in a judgmental way, but listen to me. Most Christians today live by fate. They live by fate. And when you begin to understand kingdom, and when you begin to understand that, that God, Jesus, revealed kingdom so we could not live by fate, but we could live by faith. That we didn't have to live by faith faith any longer that we could live by what we could live by faith we didn't have to live a life that wasn't pleasing to God because what pleases God faith pleases God can somebody say amen to that but see a lot of a lot of believers today are just living by faith and they say well if God wants to move in my life he'll do it listen to me that is not the truth are, are, are people, people I've heard, heard say, people say this all the time, and sometimes I cringe, sometimes I say something, sometimes I don't. But I hear people say this all the time, well, God is in control. No, he's not. 
Well, if, 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 God, if God was such a good God, why didn't he stop all this death and destruction? I'll tell you why. Because there, the earth is a cursed earth. We're living in a cursed world. The enemy is working. But I'm going to tell you, there are people that are going to get a hold of this kingdom thing. And the Bible says that the gates of hell will not prevail against those kind of people. That stop living by faith and start living by what? Faith. Sometimes people think God is kind of like the Wizard of Oz. The wizard on the Wizard of Oz. You know what I'm saying? Now, now I'm talking about the original one. <laughs> I mean, how many seen the original one? Do, do those, little, those little things that fly, do they not freak you out sometimes? I'm like, man, I just... Remember, remember when Dorothy goes to, to the wizard and, and, and then they see behind, finally you see the wizard behind the screen and it's this guy and he's moving all these things and all these things to make the wizard. Sometimes people think that's the way God works. He's kind of behind the scenes and he's pulling all these strings, doing all this stuff. But listen, God doesn't work that way. God works through his kingdom and his kingdom is in you. So he said, you got to get this. Got to make that shift where we're not living by faith, but we're living by faith. I'll give you this example um, about shifting. And if you don't shift, if you don't make that move, you're just going to get left behind and you're going to lose out. Let me just say this. Pastor Sam preached a phenomenal message last Wednesday night. Was that not incredible or what? Man, people came up and responded. But the, the whole point of the message was there's more. There's much more. And, and if you want the much more that pastor was talking about, if you want to experience that in your life, you cannot experience it living by faith. You got to live by faith. So when we lived in Romania, we were missionaries for, for several years there. And uh, oh, actually about two and a half years or about two and a half years. And so we, we got there in 1993, four, five. Thank you. Started at three and moved up. So we got there in 1995. The, the, the wall fell, the, 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 the communist wall fell in December of 1989. So um, we got there not real long after the wall. As a matter of fact, I went there about three years after the wall fell. So when we got there, first time I went there to Romania, I mean, it was backwards. It was backwards. And, and so somebody said, somebody said one of the, the, the best things that ever happened uh, after the wall fell was that Coca-Cola and McDonald's came to Romania. <laughs> Coca-Cola and McDonald's came to Romania. And I'll have to say, as a missionary at living overseas like that, the golden arches were beautiful. I mean, today I drive right by them and don't pay attention. I'm telling you, back then, I, I, would, I could see the golden arches from a long ways away when I lived in Romania. It's like, oh, I can hear the angels singing. I got to go get me a man. But, but here, here, here's what I noticed. Here's what we noticed. Here's what we noticed. Of course, now under communism, under Ceausescu, the dictator, the country was, uh, uh, was uh, uh, socialist. So socialist, socialism. And so what happened was, was that after the wall fell, the government went to a democratic government with a free market economy. And here's what we noticed. Those that still had a socialist mentality didn't make it. Because you could walk in, you could walk in uh, three different shops, and all three shops would have the exact same thing on the shelves. And so, so when they would, we, we would walk in, you could walk in there, and, and, and you would have to almost beat on the table to get somebody to wait on you when there's really nobody else there. There are three people behind the counter. They're just sitting there kind of looking at you, working a crossword puzzle. And, and, and you, you know, finally, Sandy and I would walk in and go, we can go next door and get the same thing. So what happened was there were some, some, some folks there that began to realize, wait a second, we're going to move with this free market economy. And the, one of the keys to free market economy is competition. Competition. And a way to get an edge and be more competitive in the free market economy is great customer service. 
And so we notice those who caught and they realized if you want to be successful in this new system, you've got to have good customer service. And guess, guess which ones made the shift? Guess which ones were successful? It's the ones who were willing to make the what? Shift. But see, today, a lot of believers, they're not wanting to make the shift. Sometimes, I believe, because they don't know. But others, because they've been taught wrong. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you tonight, God, God is a kingdom-minded God. God thinks kingdom, he, and his kingdom is not somewhere in a building. His kingdom is within you. Amen? And so, if, if, if I had to boil all of that parable in that teaching that Jesus did in Mark chapter 4, even with the explanation, if I had to boil it down, if I had to boil it down and make it real simple, and make just one statement out of it, I, I, would, I would say this. Here it is. Here it is. No, that's not it. <laughs> Apparently, we've had a miscommunication because I wanted it up on the screen, but, but I'll just read it to you. Here it is. Here it is. If you boiled it down, what Jesus is talking about the kingdom, it's this. If you put good seed in good soil, your life's going to be better. That's why the kingdom works. If you put good seed in good soil, your life's going to be better. If you're taking notes, you should write that down. Note changers are history. Note takers are history makers. I like that. Note takers. I heard that at a conference. I like that. Note takers are history makers. If you put good seed in good soil, your life is going to get better. Talking about this parable, this secret of the kingdom and how God works. If you put good seed in good soil, your life's going to be better. Yeah. So the question is this, what's good seed? What's good seed? Well, the answer is, it's God's word. <laughs> I, I, this is, I, I've, I've got, you know, I've got several Bibles this is my first, my first study Bible. When I said, hey, God, I'm going to the ministry. I need a good study Bible. And, and, and so actually my mom, my mom got this for me. It was, a, it was a, just a great, great study Bible. And I was looking through it. And, man, I've got, I mean, pages are falling out. I mean, you see that right there? Pages are falling out. And, and it's all marked up. Yeah. You, you remember when we used to have Bibles like this and we used to mark them up with uh, highlighters? You young folks don't know anything about highlighters. Look at that. <laughs> Underline, you put, you write notes, you know, on the side. And I was just, I was just reading through some different things. I had some stuff. Actually, I had a, um, a word that Dick Mills had given us. It was actually here in this church from, and back in 1992, I think it was. It was in July. Yeah. He, he was, he was here in gave us word. So I'm looking through this, but, but, but let me just say this about the Bible. When I was younger, I, I used to look at the Bible and say, you know, the Bible is just a bunch of do's and don'ts did anybody used to look at the bible that way i mean i would like what i don't understand it it's just a bunch of do's and don'ts why would i want to read it it's boring how many you know that how many know the bible is not boring i mean you go start reading the gospels you start reading some of the stuff in there I'm there's some funny stuff in there in there you know there is some funny stuff in the bible right and there's some stuff you just go wow man that's amazing but you know today i look at the bible a lot different I, I look at the Bible as a collection of seeds. It's just, a, it's just a collection of seeds. That's what it is. And I learned this, that if, if, I'll take, if I'll take good seeds and I put in good soil, my life's going to be better. I learned that many years ago. Many years ago. And I, I, learned, I, learned, I learned scriptures like 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I didn't just learn it. I made that truth my truth. I made that story. That's my story. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away and everything has become new. That has changed my life. Because I said, you know what? I, I believe that if I'll take good seed and I'll put, I'll put in good soil... My life is going to be 
better. And you know what? I, I, begin, to, I begin to put that in my, the soil of my heart. And I begin to believe that. And you know what happened? My identity began to change. Do you know how important it is for us to have an identity shift? You know that? Because, because a, lot of, a lot of times today, people, they, they, their, their identity is based on what they do. Sometimes their, their identity is based on their political persuasion. Well, I'm a this, and I'm a Republican, or I'm a Democrat. Everybody look at me. We are not Democrats or Republicans. We are children of the Most High God. I support this part of the government. I support this vein of the government. Listen to me. We subscribe to a higher government, and it's the kingdom of God, and that is what stands because it will be forever. Amen. Sometimes people identify with our race. Let me say this about race. Everybody listen to me. One of the things I love about our church, I love this church. You know why? Because we're a Crayola church. Man, we got every color under the sun that goes here. This is like what heaven is going to be like. Can somebody say amen to that? But the reality of it is, from God's perspective, there are only two kinds of people. There are only two. (laughs) You say, what color are they? (laughs) They're not any color. There are those who are saved and those who are not from God's perspective. And what we're going to do is those who are not saved, we're going to work on getting them saved. Can somebody save any of that? We don't care. We do not care. I don't, we don't care if you are purple and you come back next week and you're pink. It don't matter. We're coming after you. If you don't belong to Jesus. Amen. So these seeds, they're full. The Bible is full of seed that can shape our identity and make us who God wants us to be. There are seeds in there that, that shows us about our inheritance. Second Peter 1, 3 says, God's divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. Seeds, good seed, good soil. Our life's going to be better. And I'm skipping a lot of content. I had more notes than, but I'll get to it later. Amen. Because I need to get to this part right here. The question is, what's good soil? Because we know this. If we put good seed, God's word, in good soil, our life's going to be better. So the question is, what's good soil? I'm glad you asked. Good soil is a trusting heart. It's just, a, it's just that easy. It's a, it's a what? It's a what kind of heart? It's a, it's a, it's a trusting heart. Listen to Hebrews 4.2. It says, for we have heard the good news of deliverance just as they did. Yet they didn't. He's ta- what, he's, what the writer of Hebrews is talking about, he's referring to um, um, the Israelites and the promises that God had given Israel. For, they, uh, for we, we have heard the good news of deliverance just as they did. Yet they did not join their faith with the word. They didn't join their faith with the what? The seed. They didn't trust the word, the promise that God had given them. Instead, what they heard, excuse me, instead, what they heard didn't affect them deeply for they what? They doubted. Good soil is a trusting heart. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew 18, 3. And he said, Jesus said, this is Jesus speaking again here, again here, Matthew 18, 3. And he said, truly, I tell you, watch this, unless you change. Jesus, you want me to change? <laughs> yes. But change, how, what do I change to? Here's what he says. And become like little children. You will never enter The kingdom of heaven. In other words, you're not going to experience the influence of God until you're willing to change and to become like little children. What is it about little children? Children trust oh so 
easily. It's just natural for them to trust. And I'm going to have to be completely transparent here. I took great advantage of that as a dad. <laughs> Two daughters. Look, we had a blast around our house. It was, we had a lot of fun. So one day, I was sitting there watching television. The girls were in the room. They were probably third, fourth grade. And I'm wrapping up, by the way. Third, fourth grade. And uh, so we're just, we're just channel surfing, you know, and the girls are here. And so we're channel surfing, and then we, we, we came across, we came across a, a, a Spanish channel. And it was a Spanish soap opera. And so you're like, well, how did you know it was a Spanish soap opera? If you've seen one episode of any <laughs> soap opera, they all are alike, right? And so I just paused for a minute. And I don't remember if it was Haley or Faith. One of them said, Dad. So it was just Spanish. No subtitles, nothing. They said, Dad, what are they saying? <laughs> oh, I thought this is great. <laughs> this is awesome. So I'm, I'm, the scene was there was a woman standing by the man. He was in a hospital my hospital room and hospital bed and Spanish going on. And so I'm translating for them. And, and, and so, so I said, okay, okay. She's, she's, she's cheated on him and he's in the hospital and she's telling him and the girls are like, Oh, that's horrible. And of course I'm like, Oh yeah, this is really good. And I just keep going on and on and on. And so days would go by, weeks would go by They were, Every once in a while, the girls would say, Hey dad, turn to the Spanish channel and translate for us. So I would turn over there and I would translate for him. And man, we did that for months. I mean, months, 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 months. That kept on and on and on and on. And then finally, my whole world crumbled when Haley ta started taking Spanish in school. <laughs> whole world crumbled because I was translating one day. She had taken enough Spanish. She, she went, Dad, that's not what that word meant. <laughs> Why did they do that? Why did they believe that I knew Spanish Here's why, because they believe, and this is not great parenting, but just stay with me. <laughs> they believe, they believe that dad could do anything. Listen to me. Listen to me. If you put good seed in good soil, your life's going to be better. If you take God's truth concerning who you are, and if you take those seeds concerning what he's given you, and you take those truths concerning what he wants to do through you, and you begin to trust that just like a child. Just trust it. Don't try to figure it out. Just trust it. Your life is going to get better. It's going to get better. Why? Here's why. Because you're living a life of faith. You're living a life of faith. You're living a life of faith. And you'll become the person that you've always wanted to be. Because God will begin to work at his kingdom that's within you. And he'll begin to change you, listen to me, from the inside out. And he'll begin to work in you and do things that there's no way you could have done for yourself. And you'll begin to experience the more that Pastor was talking about. Weeks prior to that, he was been talking about your heart and guarding your heart. Keeping your heart, that, keeping that soil good where you're trusting. Are you with me? So what, what's God saying tonight? He's saying this. If you, you haven't made the shift... It's time. If you've been living by faith, make the shift and begin to live by faith because that's how God works in this earth that we live in today. It's how He works. I said, it's how He works. Amen. Everybody say this with me. Say, I choose to make the shift. I don't live by faith. I live by faith. I don't live by faith. I live by faith. I'm putting good seed in good soil, and my, my life's going to be better. In Jesus' name. Father, we bless you. We love you. We thank you for the truth. We're so thankful for the Holy Spirit. 
so grateful, God, that it's not hard. This is not hard. Living and walking with you. Being a child of God. Being a Christian. It's not hard, God. So thankful that we can do this. Because you've told us, you're telling us, and you're showing us something better than that. You got the Holy, got the Holy Spirit that lives within us. That it helps us. So, Father, we bless you and thank you that as we walk this thing out, put in good seed, in good soil, our trusting heart, that God, our lives are going to get better. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. So we'll become who we desire to be, and that's to be like you. It's to be like you. We just bless you and thank you. You need everybody to keep your heads bowed for just another moment, just another moment. If you're here this evening... And you, your relationship with God is strained. In other words, that your relationship with God is not where it's supposed to be. And you know it. And that, and that, and that, and that it's, you just sense it's, it's strained. And you feel like that there's this distance. There's this giant gap between you and God. You feel like that God is just sort of checked out on you. Or maybe you've checked out on Him. Well, the good news tonight is tonight you don't have to leave that way. You don't have to leave that way. You can leave by allowing Jesus to have another chance. You can can leave here by saying, you know what? I'm leaving and my relationship with God is back to where it needs to be because I've surrendered to Him. I've given Him another chance. We're all going to pray this prayer in just a moment. It's a prayer of surrender. It's a prayer where we're saying, God, I'm giving you control of my life. We're all going to pray it together. But when we pray it, if you are one in this room that says, you know what, I want my relationship with God to be restored again. And when I pray this prayer, I'm going to mean it because I'm surrendering tonight. I need you to raise your hand real quick and say, yeah, that's me. I'm giving God control of my life. I am surrendering. Yes, I see you in the back. I see you here in the front. Yes, I see you to my left. I see that. I love this. Let's pray. Father, we love you. And we thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you haven't given up on us. I thank you that you love me. And I surrender to that love. I give you control of my life. I believe that Jesus is my Savior. And tonight I allow him to be my Lord. Thank you, Father, for not giving up on me. Thank you, Father for restoring our relationship in Jesus name and everybody that agrees is a great big amen Amen. I love this can we give the Lord a big shout of praise to several amen several people amen raised their hand prayed that prayer listen if you prayed that prayer listen it's not the end it's just the beginning need you to grab the card there's a card that looks like this looks like this it's this next step I need you to grab that card. It's in the seat back in front of you. Grab that. Fill that out with the pen provided for you. And uh, you can take that card and put it in the offering uh, buckets in just a moment. Or you can text new to the word 88,000. Text new to the word 88,000. We will send the next step for you uh, to your phone. And we're not going to hassle you. We promise you. We just want to help you take uh, your next step. Amen. will not you welcome Pastor Paul as he comes. Talk just a little bit more. And he's going to receive the offering. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you came to church on a Wednesday night? Amen. Amen. I just want to encourage you, each and every one of you, just like Pastor John said, we want you guys to fill out that card. We want to help you. We are passionate about helping people take their next step. So please make sure you fill that out. And in just a moment, you'll have an opportunity to place that in the offer container as the ushers uh, pass, pass those. And so you guys can go ahead uh, and start passing those containers as well. So if you have your tithes and offerings, go ahead and get those ready. If you're a guest, you can feel free to drop your uh, that card in the offer container and drop that next step card in there because we want to help you take that next step. Now, to give the ushers time to, to gather the offering and collect and all that, uh, why don't you guys take your attentions to the screens and check out what all is happening here at Word of Life. this is your first service with us here, thanks so much for choosing Word of Life. We would love to meet you face to face, so if you would please stop by the guest center right after service so we can hand you a free gift. In the seat in front of you, you'll find a card that reads, I'm new here. 
fill that out and bring it with you. Now here's a look at what's coming up. Bringing hope to those bound by life controlling problems is the heart of our overcomers ministry here at Word of Life. It's a safe, anonymous, judgment-free environment where you can learn how to get free and stay free. They meet every Monday night at 7 p.m. in the Overcomers building at the back of the campus. One of our core values here is relationships, and that's why we do our life groups. All summer long, our life groups are meeting, and each one is a chance for you to connect with others. Don't sit around this summer with nothing to do. Get in a life group that's going to help know God better. All our groups are listed on our website. Look them up and pick one and get there. Hey, man, why don't you stand with me tonight? At this time, I'd like to ask the prayer partners to come up to the front. We want to give you guys another opportunity for those that have a need. Once you're dismissed from service, please let one of these men and women pray with you. Whatever the need is, we believe that God is going to move. God is going to respond in those situations. Also, one more reminder, do not forget, let us know what happened with you during Freedom Crusade. Let us know. Hit us up on Facebook. I'm telling you, take a card, fill it out, turn it in, call the office, whatever you want to do. We want to hear about it because we want to celebrate with you. Amen. If you're a guest, don't forget to stop by the guest center on your way out. We'd love to meet you. Thank you guys so much for coming tonight. You are dismissed. We love you. You are the only king.